and give up. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and again, I have to apologize for my voice, but what we want to cover is um, uh, number one, uh, retention and uh, summer marketing. <clears throat> so give you guys some different ideas on what we can, uh, you know, how we might be able to help you uh, track some new students. Mo all of our members find the summer to be a most productive actually time of the year to uh, really capitalize on new students. Which um, uh, frankly shocks most people as they think that summer is slow. Absolutely. And um, uh, we've been finding, um, I, you know, and I, going back 30, 35 years, I had uh, maybe, well, almost 40 years now, I always had May and June was one of my busiest enroll, uh, enrollment periods of the year. But now we're having July and August, and I mean mid, middle of July, um, as our, as our um, uh, probably busiest months of the year. And then you end up with back to school, and it's, again, a, uh, a tremendously busy period of time. So there really is no better time to enroll students than May, June, July, August, September, October. Um, the second place that I think that uh, school owners decide that uh, they're slow is they decide that it's slow because they, uh, they have a big billing drop because they uh, uh, let people cancel their billing over the summer, which is just that, you know, dumbass, uh, ridiculous um, uh, stuff. And it's, it's because they uh, structure the program inappropriately or they, um, uh, they aren't very good at keeping track of their students. And it's certainly true that, you know, Christmas and summer, you'll have a lot of people on vacation. And then when they come, uh, they get physically back from vacation. Oftentimes they don't show back up to your school because you let them get out of the habit, right? So we uh, always try to, uh, uh, to avoid and, and stop that. Um, and most but, people that I speak with, sir, I mean, they honestly, I mean, they're already mentally committed that that's going to be the, the, the norm right? During Christmas and summertime, they're ready to sit on their hands, kind of clamp down, you know, hold on to a little bit of money, whatever they have at the time. And, uh, you know, kind of, uh, hope, you know, wade out the storm, I guess. Yeah. And then, uh, and then start getting back and, and then they're excited when back to school comes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, and as you said, I mean, we'll, we'll have people are talking about working with us and say, well, I should wait till after the summer because summer's slow. Absolutely. And, uh, and it's like, well, no, summer's not slow. You just think summer's slow. And so it's the, the dumbest thing in the world you can do is to, uh, to wait till, uh, you know, wait till the fall because uh, right now is, is really slow. I, I think, Bob, the, you know, the, the, the biggest mindset problem that school owners have is they just don't know what good is, right? And if I go back to, you know, I grew up in, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, you know, and, and worked with all the guys in uh, Texas and Oklahoma and one thing or another. But I got to tell you, an awful lot of those people, you know, they, they were just happy if they could, you know, if they could run a school uh, while working another job to, uh, to keep it open. And then after that, you ended up with people who, you know, thought it was like uh, uh, missionary work. You know, well, I really love martial arts, so I'll take a pay cut from what I get, could get paid anywhere else and do this. And, you know, my rule of thumb, this is back to 1983. You know, I went to Georgetown thinking I was going to get an MBA at Harvard, end up in Wall Street and ended up coming to Denver and opening five schools in 18 months, six schools in 30 months. But my rule from day one was I always had to be able to make, you know, 10, 20 percent uh, plus or minus what I could make in my other best opportunities in order to justify doing this, you know, because otherwise I could do martial arts for a life as a hobby, but I wasn't wasn't going to, uh, you know, go from being able to make half a million a year doing something else to uh, 50,000 a year doing this. I wasn't going to take a vow of poverty doing it. And it certainly seems like, you know, there are some, some people who act like running a martial arts school is taking a vow of poverty. Isn't, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> it's just, uh, it's just pretty insane, but let, let's, let's, let's talk about uh, Bob, what, you know, what it is that we do with school owners to really help them be uh, the most successful they can be. I was, I was trying to show a, a, a video a little bit earlier, but the audio was, was not very good. Let me see if I can, um, 
um, pull a different one that's going to have a little bit better, better audio to share with people. And I think it's a, a you know, a good opportunity to get a sense really of, uh, of what it is our schools are accomplishing and what they do. Um, so give me half a second to, uh, to cue this up and let me see if I can um, get this to cooperate here. Here's, uh, I'm gonna share, share screen for just a second here and give everybody a, a couple of examples. This is uh, Paul Prendergast, and he's in Brick, New Jersey. Uh, Brick, for, uh, for those of you who don't know, is if you take a kind of a triangle between Atlantic City, Philadelphia, and New York City, he's right in that little triangle. And um, he has gone um, um, uh, just dramatic um, results. He's 130000 a month right now uh, with two locations, and that's almost double from where he was uh, a couple of years ago with quadruple the net profit. But let's, uh, uh, let's hear a couple of uh, minutes here of, uh, of uh, Paul. Thank this group. I have to thank everybody because um, it was your you know, leadership and your drive and, and the input from everybody here that has motivated myself and the team. And you know, as far as coaching us is amazing because I was on a, a call yesterday with uh, some school owners that were interested in what I was doing. So I had a little Zoom with about six different school owners and they were scared and lost. And I was sharing with them what I'm doing as far as reopening. Uh, this is my idea. This is how we're going to go about it, blah, blah, blah. And they, they all thought I was crazy. And they, they're scared to, they're literally are scared to death. And they were blown away at the fact that we even signed people up. Right. They were, right. They, 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 when I, when I dropped that bomb, I said, no, we're, we're, you know, students are trickling in, nothing great, but we're plugging a couple of holes here and there. And I uh, told the numbers that, you know, we're off by about 10, 12%. They were just like their mouths were hanging on the floor. They go, you did what? And I said, yeah, no, we signed people up first. Because all oh, well, that's what's a two week program. I said, uh, I said the twelve month program. So we're, they they couldn't wrap their head around. It. So I have to you know thank everybody. And, you know, Master Oliver, Master Andrew, Master Smith. I mean, thank you. I mean, that's that's really, 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 really great feedback. We appreciate that, man. And you know, and, and I think the word you used is leadership, and that's what we've been. Master Oliver's used that absolutely. term so all now. And and, uh, absolutely. and 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 Paul there was talking about. Uh, his results during uh, COVID. And what's, uh, what's uh, amazing to me is our members were mostly, what would you say, uh, Bob, in 2020, when COVID was at its peak, they were mostly about uh, up 20%? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, Master Harrison, but uh, he was pissed off that he was only up 20%. Yeah, Tim Harrison, who's now single school, uh, Springfield, uh, right outside, well, I guess about an hour outside of Chicago. Uh, and he's been doing um, uh, what in the range of um, of 100, 100. Well, no, he did 130 last month in one school. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, to give everybody a little bit of an idea and that there was actually a, a, a different video I wanted to share here for a Let's second. Talk about that. Um, here we go. So let me share this. To give everybody an idea, and then we'll get back on uh, some other content. But this is going to give you a, another idea here. Uh, figure out how to do that. So and my my usual figuring out the the, the technical uh, thing. Here we go. Uh, can, can we hear the audio? Uh, it's very low, sir. Okay, that's not going to work. Our, uh, I'm going to have to do a better video playback system from now on. Uh, the, the YouTube videos are somehow uh, not hitting the kind of volume we need. But, but it's anyway. interesting, Paul had brought up that, uh, you know, he was hanging around his peers and or his organization, um, you know, outside of our group, outside of martial arts wealth mastery and how they were completely blown away 
by his progress and growth, even during this period of time when everybody else was basically throwing up their hands and giving up. Yeah. And, uh, and he's not the only one. I mean, we've heard how many members, sir, that when they actually set, you know, uh, talk about their results and their growth uh, within their, you know, their organizations or some of the other peers uh, that um, in many cases they're embarrassed are because, uh, you know, people just don't believe them. Um, and uh, that's the big value of actually, I think, being part of the uh, martial arts wealth mastery team is that uh, you can um, you're you're surrounded by people that are are actually doing these things and growing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, um, um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about the uh, directly summer marketing. We're at mid-June right now. And I've always thought of, of this time of year to have three distinct segments. Right. You've got May, June. And to make it, I guess, a little more specific, May 1st to, let's say, uh, June 15th, uh, which I'm thinking of within a couple of weeks of school getting back out of session. So here in, uh, in Colorado, they get out pretty early. So uh, uh, they get out uh, uh, before um, the holiday weekend. Uh, but I'm specifically thinking from, you know, a month before kids get out of school until a couple of weeks after they've gotten out of school. I think is that one distinct period of time. The second distinct period of time is that midsummer, you know, when, when uh, most schools think everybody's off to Disney or something like that, and that their you know, their numbers are tanking, uh, which is not true if you, if you do it right. And then we have back to school and I'm with back to school. I'm thinking two or three weeks before school goes back in session uh, through the first month or so that, that schools have been back in session. And from a marketing standpoint and, you know, with uh, with broadcast media, you think in terms of flights, you know, when I was buying lots of infomercial and TV spots and so forth, you'd have a flight and then you take some time off and you have a flight. Um, and um, what I mean is how you how you bought uh, time. But. I think of those as three distinct segments and I think of them that way because I can make a real heavy push in May, June for something for the kids to do for summer. Mid June or uh, mid July, I have all kinds of places. I'm, I'm talking about kids market. This is adult market too. I have all kinds of places where people are congregating when it's midsummer, when school's out of session, one thing or another. So I have a whole bunch of places that I can go get to them. And then for back to school, I have all kinds of things that are uh, uh, useful and appropriate for uh, uh, for back to school. And so uh, to give uh, three or four examples. So May, June is one of the things that everybody wants to do is have a big database of everybody who has ever raised their hand. And in other words, they have, um, you know, gone to their website, opted in. They have come to an intro and not enrolled. They have met you at a live event. They've met you at an elementary school and you have, you know, phone number, email address, mailing address. You have all their information. So I think in terms of I'm going to go after all of those people in May, June for summer. And then I'm going to go after all those people in August, September for back to school. And so now it's a time when I do a heavy direct mail. I do heavy blitz on email, heavy blitz on text messaging, heavy blitz on automated broadcast voicemail, heavy blitz on, on uh, somebody on the phone doing outbound calls, as well as retargeting nowadays. So I'm going to be retargeting on Google, retargeting on Facebook. Um, and then I have back to school, same idea. I'm going to take everybody I've ever interacted with and really go after them heavy uh, during that period of time. Then the next thing is, is you have groups, organizations, activities where people congregate. So again, to use the kids market as an example, elementary schools, public, private, church, uh, et cetera, that's a place, and middle schools and high schools, but that's a place where I can get to the kids just before they get out of school. And so I, for years, had 100, 120 schools that you know, our flyer for the summer program would go out with grade reports. I could get them uh, to give them out at the end of the year. I could get them to give out uh, certificates for good grades, certificates for good attendance, for whatever other reason that they had. Hell, my um, uh, son's school had uh, a thing for um, um, behaving honorably, which is good for them, uh, but they had a, a prize for that. So I could get the schools to give out our certificates as a reward uh, during that period of time. So 
what would happen is right at the end of the school, we'd have a blitz of going in and doing PE teacher for the day of doing, um, uh, they would do a lot of, uh, what do they call it, um, field days where they'd be out, uh, you know, outside, you know, mostly playing or doing different games and so forth, where we could set up a booth and teach classes and so forth. Some of them had end of year carnivals and so forth, but mostly I could get a lot of literature out through public, private, Montessori, church schools, et cetera, where it was giving the kids something to do. Nowadays, you have uh, uh, what's it called? Red Plum, where they have the email that goes out um, for the kids, but it's uh, also a great time to overlay all of that with, uh, with direct mail and all kinds of other media advertising. Then you have Midsummer, and for Midsummer, uh, what we know is you have live events going on for Memorial Day, for July 4th, for uh, um, Labor Day, you have uh, Canada Day, uh, all that stuff that goes on in, in Canada as well. You have often taste of type of events, you have fairs, carnivals, um, movies churches. in the, we'll say it again. Churches, yeah. Yeah, churches have big live events. Mm -hmm. They also have um, um, boys clubs, girls clubs. Yeah. yeah, boys clubs, girls clubs, scouts have, have camp uh, camp activities, Girl Scouts have camp activities. So we would go to all the Boy Scout camps, all the Girl Scout camps. We'd go to um, all of the daycares, to the summer camp programs. Um, we had it where, um, um, you know, one of my schools, I remember we had a bus showing up every hour, all week. So a bus load of kids from summer camps would show up. The bus drive, you know, we would do uh, permission slips ahead of time. But the bus driver would get off the bus and give us a list of everybody who was on the bus. We'd go make a copy of the list of everybody who's on the bus. And at the very least, the list would have the parent contact information, in other words, their cell phone number, and oftentimes an email address and a, phone, and a mailing address. But at the very least, we'd have a phone number. So all the kids would get off the bus. We'd do an exciting first intro for them. We would send them um, home with a big packet of information. Then about the time the parents uh, got home from uh, the daycare with the kids, we'd do a phone blitz and get hold of all of them on the phone. And of course, we would call them, leave a voicemail. You know, nowadays, call them, leave a voicemail, text them, and, uh, and email them. Uh, and we could do an automated voicemail to them all. I'll, I'll throw, throw that one in. Uh, but we actually had it where summer camps would bring a bus every hour, and we'd be teaching uh, 20, 30 kids every, every hour that got off the, uh, got off the, um, uh, the bus. Um, we could send instructors to all the daycare, to all the summer camps. We could send an instructor to, uh, like I said, Boy Scout, Girl Scout camps, uh, et cetera. But there's all that. Kind of, and by the way, here, we were finding about one out of four, one out of five elementary schools hosted summer camp. Um, and they would aggregate three or four schools. They would actually host this little summer camp in their in their school for working parents, uh, for the something for the kids to do over the summer. So, you know that was one opportunity that worked really well. I mean, we we just get a flood of enrollments from that. The live event marketing, and Master Oliver, if I could just back on that, getting into the summer camps, I talked with a lot of school owners too, and um, you know they they think it's the challenge to get into these places, but trust me, it's the opposite. Um, you know, the two main things that they're struggling for is activity and staffing. Yeah. So, you're, you know, you're a godsend if you can actually show up and let them know that you're able to help them out. So it's a big win-win. So I didn't want to fluff over that. Or... No, not at all. Not at all. Um, the, the other is, I think, the, the live event marketing. And, you know, we have such huge results with those. And um, again, you know, Bob, as, 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 as you know, and you've uh, adopted it as well, I've been not too charitable for most of the consultants running around, you know, I, uh, and some of them are friends of mine, but, you know, we've been calling it the bozo explosion. But what happens so many times is they kind of see what we're doing and then imitate it, but then they'd miss the key component of what makes it work, right? Um, you know, my best example is my PE teacher for the day versus what school talks ended up becoming. And the idea of what I used to do, and this is like 1984, is we would go teach all the PE classes uh, for an elementary school, middle school, high school. We would do permission slips ahead of time, permission slips giving us the name of the kid, the name of the parent, uh, mailing address, phone number, and then email address, 
uh, and today mobile number. And then a little checkbox of everybody who participates in our program today will receive a, a, a free month of lessons or two free weeks of lessons. If you'd like to be contacted to schedule an appointment, check yes. And so now everybody who checked yes, we have permission to call them and schedule appointments. Everybody who didn't check yes, we'd still follow up. We'd follow up by email and follow up by mail. We just wouldn't call them at dinner. Um, but you know, I, I, I probably enrolled over the years five or 10,000 students from just that component of it. But then, then it gets butchered down. And what, what happens is, you know, uh, uh, somebody teaches them to go into Mrs. Jones's elementary second grade class. And there's now 25 kids and misses the point about the permission slips. So now you have no ability to proactively follow up. Maybe they allow you to pass out flyers or guest passes. And then they say, come down Saturday morning, we have a class. Well, it's not that you don't get anything. But in my version, 500 kids in the elementary school, we got 400 permission slips. We probably would get 100 appointments, 50 intros, 25 enrollments versus a little, a little trickling. Uh, for not much more work. I mean, for a, you know, a day at the elementary school, maybe two days at the elementary school. And you could replicate that just over and over and over again. But these, these live events are the same, Bob. I, uh, I laugh because you know, I'm here in the Denver metro area and we have uh, three mile high karate schools here. Um, and I've been doing the movie theater thing since Karate Kid 1. And Jeff Smith and Junior Institute were doing the movie theater thing since Enter the Dragon was released. Right. And, you know, I, I almost never, ever see anybody else. And I know in Colorado, there's something like 360 martial arts schools. I rarely ever see anybody else even try to imitate what we do. And to be fair, one time, uh, my son Chase and I went to a movie down at our favorite theater, you know, Belmar and in, in uh, Lakewood, Colorado. And there was a martial arts school there. I'm going, well, good for them. You know, finally, somebody else is doing it. And they had the big blow up kicker. I'm thinking, ah, oh, good for them. You know, they did, they did. But then I sat there and watched them, you know, and, and we were there a little bit before the movie. So I watched them and we went, got concessions and I watched them. And then, uh, you know, in the middle of the movie, I came back out and, and looked at what they were doing. And then at the end of the movie, I looked at what they were doing. And what it was is they had, you know, none of the stuff that we would do, you know, the price wheel and the script on how to run people through, none of the, nothing to go on to get them to the booth no TV or anything either. Um, but, you know, the blow up guy is, is, is good, but it was looked like a high school or college student sitting behind the table on his phone the entire time like this, probably watching, you know, uh, whatever it was, Instagram or uh, nowadays, I guess it would be TikTok uh, or texting somebody. And the entire time I was in, in the theater, which was a, uh, you know, two and a half hour movie, I never saw him interact with anybody once, right? And we even had it where um, I remember Master Smith in uh, uh, one of the Regal theaters. Um, they actually ended up somehow having a mar another martial arts school in at the same time. And Master Smith's booth, um, they did like 80 appointments that weekend. And the other booth, guy was sitting there behind the table, uh, same thing, waiting for somebody to come up and talk to him. And probably talked to two people where we made 80 appointments or Mass Smith School made 80 appointments on the uh, same weekend. It's just what well, what happens is they miss the component that makes it work and the component that makes it worse. You know, you can um, narrow it down to hustle a little bit, I guess, but it's about get having a reason to get them to the booth and then having a reason for them to fill out information and then making an appointment on the spot because. Uh, Bob, you, you know, you know, you and I have talked about this. I did uh, used to do the Boy Scout Jamboree here. And by the way, everybody told me you couldn't do it. The Boy Scouts in their national um, uh, rules say no martial arts, no boxing, no motorcycling. And um, I think there's some other thing that they have a prohibition. And everybody told me, oh, you can't do Boy Scouts. They won't let you do anything. Well, that's crap. You know, they'll let you do all kinds of, uh, of stuff if you just ask the right way. But we would go to this Boy Scout Jamboree and we would literally get you know, those big black leaf bag, trash bags, four or five, um, or worst case, two or three full of leads, little lead slips like this. Well, back then I could put a, a crew of 10, 15 people on doing outbound calls on Sunday night. We get hold of 90% of the people we call. What we know now is people don't answer their phone. So if it's an uh, unknown number, 
So what we want change it to is we make appointments on the spot, which frankly would have been better 30 years ago too, if we had known any better. Number two is um, uh, we always get our contact record into their phone as soon as possible. That way, if they don't answer the phone, at least we know that they're intentionally ignoring us, right? So uh, what would you add to that, Bob? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, it's a, a, definitely a priority to make sure that you book the appointment and, um, and follow up with them as soon as you can. Never postpone that opportunity. But um, uh, yeah, and obviously, you know, not only call, but text and email making sure that you're doing all of those on top of it and, um, and, uh, you know, continue to follow up. Your, uh, your, uh, illness with your voice here is, uh, it's is terrible. Giving you that, well, it's getting, giving you that kind of, uh, deep raspy sound. I think you're, uh, you're <laughs> in movie star, uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, vocal range there. You could, uh, you could try out for a, a, a re reprieve of uh, Marlon Brando or, or something like that. Yeah. I've always had that comfortable to speak <laughs> i was at a deal with uh, jimmy Trim, um, um jerry trimble um uh, his uh, father-in-law is uh, mickey dolan's of the monkeys so i had gone out for their show and i was there with jerry trimble and somebody uh, uh came up to me and said you know you you look just like william holden i was like well that's a you know that's a compliment i had never i had never placed one before but you're having that kind of you know um a uh, little craggly voice with the you know it's uh, uh you're, you're you're gonna have to monopolize on that you got to do a you know we're gonna have to do a series of recordings before you get well uh, yeah. or you're gonna have to you know you're gonna have to take up three or four packs a day um yeah. something like yeah. that only if it didn't hurt so much to talk <laughs> yeah i i i uh, i, I I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one um that was my favorite part of top gun maverick the way they managed to get uh you know because um uh, Val Kilmer has had throat cancer oh, wow. and he, he talks, I, I forget what you call it, but one of those things in his voice, yeah, in his yeah. throat. Yeah. Um, and so they managed to use artificial intelligence. And of course they built it around that he had throat cancer and couldn't talk anyway. But when they actually had him talk, they built AI in to simulate his voice because oh, wow. that wasn't actually him talking. I, I, uh, I love that movie. I hope, uh, I hope they, they do well uh, on contrast, the Jurassic park movie, by the way, starts with an anti-corporate farm screed, an anti-GMO um, um, uh, screed. And then the villain is uh, vaguely reminiscent of Tim Cook. And they, um, uh, it's a, uh, the whole thing is about why they shouldn't be using um, anything in the dinosaur blood or DNA to uh, find useful uh, treatments for humans. So, um, you know, Hollywood strikes again on that one, Bob. <laughs> good but yeah. i mean but yeah back on what you know in, in, anybody who's on here live and i know we have a lot of people who are live on social about. media as well but uh you know feel free to ask any questions bob i think they can raise their hand and uh um there's a little um do we have a discussion opportunity here or is, do we have that shut down we don't have the discussion but they can raise their hand Yes, sir. Yeah, you can raise your hand. We can promote you to panelists and you feel free to ask questions. So any and all questions is, is certainly welcome at any time. Um, but back but, on what we were saying, sir, I mean, it was, um, uh, you know, again, I, I speak with a lot of schools that are, um, you know, that are literally struggling. Yeah. And, um, I, and it just astounds me that uh, you were talking about making appointments, that how so many of them are either shy or just never even thought of doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's typically do the demo, hand out flyers, and hope they call. Go back to the school and, and wait for the phone to ring. And it's just the wrong thing to do. You've really yeah, got I, to be proactive. I, I was, um, um, and I'd give credit where it was due, but I, I, I'm sorry that I don't remember the gentleman's name. But I was speaking at uh, a YK Kim event. This is quite a few years ago. Um, and of course, our, our, um, our uh, close friend Toby now works for YK Kim after uh, coming up with us for, for many, many years. Um, but um, I was speaking at a YK Kim event and for some reason, what he did is he scheduled every room to be like 45 minutes with two different speakers. And so as me and this other gentleman that he didn't know me, I didn't know him, but I was, I was in the room. He kind of walked in the room. We never really connected. And then he just kind of started speaking. 
And he spoke for his half, you know, uh, whatever it was, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And um, I was listening to him and watching everybody else listen to him. And, you know, there wasn't a huge audience, but it was maybe 35, 40 schools. And he said somewhere along the way that he did 50 enrollments every month. And this, this gentleman was in uh, Chicago. Um, really nice guy. I, again, I, I wish I could remember his, his name to share with everybody. But uh, he says somewhere along the way, he does 50 enrollments a month on average. And then he kind of gets to Q&A and people started asking him questions about how he does his Tang Soo Do and what he does with this. It was all martial arts, technical stuff. And finally, I stepped up and said, hi, we didn't meet. I'm Stephen Oliver. I'm next. And apparently nobody in here really wants to learn how to make money. They just want to know about all the technical stuff that they already probably know about. But I do. So let me ask you a question. You said that you um, average 50 enrollments a month. He goes, yes. I said, anybody else in here do 50 enrollments a month on average? No. Anybody in here think it'd be a good idea to figure out how he does 50 <laughs> enrollments a month? And you saw this like light bulb come up over their head. Right. And I say to him, I say, so how do you do 50 enrollments a month? And he goes, oh, we just do flyers. Well, okay, that's a lot of enrollments a month for just doing flyers. Right. Do you have a copy of the flyer you pass out? He goes, well, I might have. So he goes over and pulls out his notebook. He goes, yeah, it's hit. this is it. Well, I got to tell you, I'm, you know, probably best in the martial arts of designing ads and copy. Wasn't great, right? Wasn't horrible, you know, but it wasn't great. You know, I could have, you know, doubled the efficacy on it. So I, I looked at it, I said, okay, so this is the flyer. Has an offer, that's good has some photos that's good has a headline that's good how many flyers a month do you pass out one million <laughs> well it was a hundred thousand hundred thousand oh, wow. wow. he said oh we get about a hundred thousand flyers a month out in other words a million million wow. two a year it's yeah. like well okay and see yeah flyers work but take that ratio hundred thousand flyers you get 50 students maybe get a hundred intros. So what's a hundred thousand to a hundred, one in a thousand, you know, it's a, a real small percentage, one tenth of 1%. Um, and depend upon what you're doing and what it costs, that may be enough of a, in, in his case, he had a, a whole crew volunteer and paid that were doing nothing but flyers. Now I've done that many times in a month, but it was more, charitable fundraiser that went out in the school mail for all the elementary schools and they were passed out with their Friday folders. So I needed staff of 10 people to go deliver them to the elementary school or a couple of people to deliver them to the ad building, it depended upon which district that would then go out in all the, now we got a ton of traffic off of that. Um, and we got a ton of traffic for the cost of printing hundred thousand flyers with very minimal uh, labor to go with it. But yeah, when you say flyers, yeah, it works. Just doesn't work very well, right? If I sit down in the theater and I give everybody a flyer, I'm going to get, you know, one tenth of one percent um, or something like that return. On the other hand, if I have a reason for them to come up and talk to me, and then I have a script and a process to make an appointment, our numbers are we're getting 75 to 90 percent. Depends on who it is, but, you know, worst case is 75 percent of the people we talk to making appointments on the spot. Then of the people that we make an appointment with between 50% and 75%, 50% is worst case, showing up for an intro, and then between 50 and 75% enrolling, right? So worst case, if I make 100 appointments, I got 50 intros, I got 25 enrollments. Not a bad day or a bad weekend's ends work, right? And, and we can improve each of those ratios. We can improve each of those ratios by more effective follow-up, by better uh, tools, by uh, following up, by dripping on them with testimonials and other information. We can improve those ratios with um, um, uh, a number of different mechanisms to improve the show rate, you know, like we'll text and uh, call and email as, as reminders, and we'll send them testimonials and so forth. Then we'll have packages of testimonials and stuff when they come in and in the uh, intro enrollment process. But 
now you have a benchmark of what you know is 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 going to work right so but again summer the th nice thing about summer and, and and by the way here's the worst thing you do the worst thing you do is you have all of your staff so busy running a summer camp because you're convinced that you're going to be broke over the summer without it so you need the summer camp to replace the revenue you're going to use from a school and now you've got no bandwidth left to be marketing and then what happens is you burn everybody out before you get to back to school, which is another big blitz and another big uh, time. I want my staff to be free all summer or, or, or damn near uh, all summer to be doing marketing. I mean, we can give, I, I, I would always close for the week of July 4th, for instance, to give everybody, everybody that week off. Um, but there's all kinds of things you can do over the summer. And we did stuff with the local pools. We did stuff like, I, I repeat myself a little bit. We every every scout troop, every Girl Scout troop, we did things with all the daycares, with all the summer camps. Uh, we did stuff with the movie theaters, and sometimes they'd have Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning screenings for the kids in the in the the day camps. Like I said, we'd have the day camps bringing buses to us. We'd be out in the movie theaters, but we'd be out at any live event we could find. And Bob, we you and I have talked about this. This is why I got really good at you know, and this was with six schools. But I always took a different route to the school every day, right? And the reason I did that was I'd go by all the rec centers, walk in, see what they were promoting, what flyers, pick up everything, look at the bulletin board. I'd go through all the elementary schools. I'd go through different grocery stores and if they had a bulletin board or flyers that were out, I would go by all the big parks. And a lot of times I just discovered event because there was a banner on the park. And of course, nowadays, you know, most of them you discover it on Google. You go to the, you know, whatever your local city is and look at their website or what they're promoting. Look at the website for the convention center for the big uh, hotels. You look at the uh, the website. The, here we have, um, uh, which is a national kids pages, I think it's called, where they have all kinds of, and another deal all about kids, where they have all the different people go and post the uh, different activities and events they do. I used to bring the um, newspapers like the parent newspaper, the alternative newspaper. Uh, um, our paper would do summer activities section sometimes um, uh, as summer was coming up. I'd bring those into our staff meeting and bring 30 copies with highlighters and everybody go through and uh, let's go through and highlight anything that might be interesting to us. And let's highlight businesses that have our, our clientele. We did a, a deal with a $780 million uh, a year electronics chain one time where they let us set booths up in the lobbies and they put our ad for the free certificate in their Sunday circular, which was an eight page color insert in the Sunday paper. And then everybody who spent more than a thousand dollars and pretty much you couldn't walk into one of these stores without spending a thousand dollars, got a real nice certificate for a free month and a, um, a, a free uniform. Didn't cost us anything other than setting up the booths and doing the certificates. Uh, we did great with that. And so it's just being creative and looking for opportunities and so forth. Yeah. Well, anything I, to add to that, we'll call it a day here in a second because yeah. we have, um, what, four meetings in uh, three hours going on today. Back to back. We're going to be zoomed out. Yes, sir. Well, and, um, we're in, and we're in parallel right now. We got another one going on the other <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, you know, uh, most importantly, there, there's a ton of things you can do during a summer, but as Master Oliver is suggesting, always be marketing. So I recommend you get a calendar, start marking out what activities you gonna you can book or book throughout the year. This way, where you see the gaps, you're always thinking about what can you do to fill that gap in. I think I could, if I could screen share, here's a... Uh, an example of one of the schools for June. I mean, you've got Father's Day, marriage mailer, uh, money mailer, pocket coupons, piece direct mail pieces. There's just, I mean, and and this is you know, pizza parties. So this is just for the month of June. So that gives you an example on why our guys are doing so well. I mean, obviously, you know, if we could pick that magic that one magic thing that's going to drive a bunch of people to us i mean obviously we would all be millionaires but it, it just never works out that way and there's murphy's law the thing that you think is going to be the home run might be the one that flops so you always got to be piling on different things to really pump the school with new students and be and and just book appointments that is so important um yeah it, it just it will it'll change everything no that's exactly right and 
I, I don't want to leave people thinking that uh, everything we're doing is manual labor. Um, we're kicking ass right now on Facebook. Yep. Uh, it's, it's doing great. Um, obviously, Facebook, that includes Instagram. Uh, we're doing great with uh, Google. In other words, with Google search, uh, search engine optimization, SEO, uh, developing sites where we're getting tremendous traffic or working with companies that do that. Uh, we're doing great with pay-per-click. Um, we're doing um, a lot with direct mail. Uh, direct mail, the number one thing that uh, makes direct, the, the first priority with direct mail is what list you mail it to. And the second priority is what the offer is. And I, I would say the third priority, maybe even the second was getting the damn thing open. But um, um, we're doing great with direct mail, although uh, most of the direct mail we do are with people who've already raised their hand for follow-up. So it'd be like mailing to people right now for a summer offer as opposed to uh, uh, cold direct mail. Um, Bob, anybody who's on the, and I know we have some people who are watching live on social media and live on the webinar who are, who are already uh, clients of ours, uh, but anybody who's not, um, Bob, give everybody your phone number. We'd be happy to sit down one-on-one -on -one and give you some, some ideas. Yeah, absolutely. It's 720-256-0208. Again, that's 720-256-0208. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'd be happy to sit down. Uh, uh, it's uh, martialartswealth.com. There's a bunch of free gifts and stuff there. Uh, but give Bob a call and we'd be happy to chat. Bob, any last uh, last words of wisdom before we uh, we call it a day? Just get out there and do something. Uh, market, get out there and uh, book those events. Again, there's a lot of opportunity going on around your neighborhood. I'm sure, um, as, as we mentioned earlier, the um, you know these these summer camps and uh, these other places that are doing all these summer camps and activities, they're they're dying for activity and they're dying for staffing. So, I mean, it's just a big it's an easy win-win for you to get in there and talk to them and see how you can help them out. And they obviously will be able to help you out. Yeah. By, by midsummer, they're starting to get stale and bored. And, and plus this year they're understaffed. So they're having trouble getting staff as well. Right. And you can, you can um, uh, give them something uh, extra to do. Uh, what I will say is, is put it on your tickler file and, and call them all in January, um, uh, January and February when they're really working on, uh, on prepping everything initially. Because that'll help as well. Yeah. On that note, we'll call it a day. Thank you, gentlemen and uh, ladies. You, and, uh, be sure and give uh, Bob a call, and we'd be happy to follow up from there. Absolutely. And Bob, hang on a half a second here. Yeah.